From the Middle is a founding member of Odd Pods Media. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode number 240. Holy crap. Uh, from the middle, we are three middle class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with a point of view that's somewhere in the middle. This is a comedy, culture, entertainment, and sometimes interview style podcast where we have tons of fun and excellent conversation. In this episode, we ask questions like, should Chipotle be making brisket? Should you use the women's room or men's room if your restroom is busy at a McDonald's? We talk about some of the stuff that we're watching, what's going on with Vince McMahon. Have you seen Epic Universe in Orlando? And what did you think of Bobby Lee on Joe Rogan? Tons of great conversation. We hope you love this episode. Share it with your bestest of friends and worstest of enemies. Enjoy. And we we also say two mildly bad curse words in this one. Okay, you've been warned. <laughs> oh, for the love. Sorry, just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? You're so cerebral, and you're so developed and evolved. Had dinner as a family at Chipotle this evening with our nephew. Okay. Did you know that for a limited time they have brisket and mac and cheese? Ooh. Just brisket? Oh no! Uh, I thought. Well, maybe I thought there was also maybe mac and cheese. They might. I I didn't I didn't see it. I got a burrito with brisket. How is that interesting? Honestly. Uh, this is the first time this has happened, by the way. As the kid was wrapping it, he goes, oh, it ripped. Can I get you another tortilla? And I go, yeah, I'd prefer another tortilla. Legit question. If I'd have said no, would he have just given me the ripped one or like dumped out all the contents onto a new tortilla as opposed to giving me a second one? I think that goes one of three ways and either <laughs> we're really breaking well, it down tonight, man. <laughs> well, four, I'm a fast thinker uh, <laughs> when it comes to food. That is impressive. Like you, <laughs> that was really fast how you got to three or four. So he, he either just continues and wraps it up in the foil as is and hands it to you and just goes, sorry, sorry. I just, ripped it. just says, sorry. Or he dumps into a new tortilla, like you said, right? Gets a new tortilla, dumps everything in it, or just throws the whole thing away and starts over. Um, the fourth way is, is he'll say, well, then you can take this burrito, turn it sideways, and, you know. Um, <laughs> no, that's when I go, no, 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 no. Put no, that no, no, in the no, bowl no. for me. Yeah. I'll still take my correct nicely wrapped burrito but i just want all that stuff in a bowl to take home yeah my guess my guess is he would do any one of those options except for the last one and, i think uh, he would do any for you but he's gonna take the path of least resistance which is say hey sorry it ripped a little bit and start to wrap it and see if you push back and if you push back he'd probably do anything that you wanted him to do but yeah. he's probably gonna see if he can pass off that ripped burrito all right agree. If you're a middler and work at Chipotle, let us know what proto, proto is on that. But here, so here's my take. It's a little too sweet for the rest of the burrito contents. I was a little disappointed that I didn't stick with my regular chicken. It was very nice. Yeah. It wasn't bad, yeah. but it was too sweet and too smoky. My nephew got it, the brisket in a bowl, and he said unsolicited this doesn't match the rest of the stuff mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. very he's like by itself i would prefer it over the chicken but with all the other chipotle ingredients it just doesn't feel like it goes with it yeah i can see that i feel like you'd, you'd have to play to it specifically and you, there might be a way to do it like i could see it being mixed with like the corn salsa the corn that salsa probably, exactly that'd be good um but like yeah i'm not sure about sour cream 
and yeah, or and, you need a sweet and spicy sauce. It, it you can have sweet in it, but it needs to have the spicy on the back end a little bit. Uh, I city barbecue just did that to me. I got baked beans and they were way too sweet. It was like almost like a candied barbecue sauce with the beans. No, not not my thing. So the first employee who does the tortilla, the rice, and sometimes the beans, I said, what beans do you recommend with the brisket? And he goes, I don't eat beans. The next girl who usually does, if he doesn't do the beans, the beans in the first couple toppings goes, what type of beans? And I said, what do you recommend? What's good with the brisket? She goes, I don't eat beans. (laughs) And I was like, wow. Okay, black, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Thought you guys would be interested and thought one of our friends in Odd Pods Media would be interested in weighing in on the brisket burrito for a limited time. Well, it doesn't have to be a burrito. The brisket at Chipotle. How are you guys doing? It's a new week. (laughs) Yeah, great. Did you guys try one last thought on Chipotle? They had their like garlic sirloin steak or whatever not long ago at chipotle that was really good some people thought it was too garlicky i loved it i thought it was really good i want them to bring that back it was nice the people in my family that normally get steak prefer the regular steak but they did try it and didn't have too much to say just were like yeah i'd prefer the other one okay all right Anyways. so the resound the resounding feedback is stick to what you know chipotle <laughs> yeah I our midwest so. palates have gotten used to your baseline deliverables <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a cheese sauce, take 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 some notes from Moe's. That's what mm-hmm. I that's what I say. Take some notes from notes from what? Moe's. Moe's on the office? No, the burrito place. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Uh, Dylan, do you know what I'm talking about? Is it Moe's Southwest? Yeah. Oh yeah, Moe's. M O E apostrophe. I was. Yes. <laughs> Why? Oh, no, 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 no. Welcome to Mo's. This was spelled in my head M O S E. In what world <laughs> would you hold on? I know. I'm sorry. Let's just if move on. Say, so, if if we're talking word, about burritos. He's probably thinking Mo's Simpsons. To 500 people, how many people would go? From the office, Mo cousin Mo. This is that's, part of. This oh, that's is, right. yeah, I, yeah. This is part of Kendall's deadpan delivery on things that I'm like, is this a joke? Is this an actual thing? And he's being totally serious. Yeah, serious this time. Okay. Yeah. Mo's. We'll see how it plays out for the rest of the episode. So, Kendall, to answer your question, oh, I've never had Mo's, so I don't oh. know about their queso. But I would love to try it because I love a good white queso sauce. That's what they got, man. And I, I like I like Moe's. I, I prefer Chipotle overall. But, you know, if you want a Chipotle that has sort of like the more familiar Tex-Mex flavor profile, um, like the more like I in my mind, I picture like red saucy kind of flavor profile that you would expect from like a Mexican restaurant. That's mm-hmm. what Moe's is. Mm-hmm. Um, Chipotle is sort of its own, its own deal mm-hmm. with the fresh, bright cilantro kind of flavorings. Um, Moe's is good. I like it. It's solid. Um, I prefer Chipotle, but Moe's has queso and they know how to do it. Chipotle doesn't know how to do queso. They're really Gouda at that. Mm-hmm. On the food tip, uh, you guys know I love me some Adam Savage, and his latest one day build is him just making some organizers for his drawers, like some spacer organizer mm-hmm. things, because his wife and him have gotten into dehydrating things mm-hmm. and then using a mortar and pestle and making powders to use as flavorings on food. So mm-hmm. they'll like char some onions. You have to freeze the mortar and pestle, he said, lest it become a paste. But freezing it keeps it in a powder form. And then you sprinkle that on like your mashed potatoes. Interesting. And he's like, you get flavor notes out of foods that you didn't even think would make it richer and better. But have you guys ever thought about getting into a part of cooking that is more of one of those niche like 
getting a dehumidifier and a mortar and pestle is a definite like you're going to do some learning and some exploring. Have you guys ever thought and we're foodies and we talk about it all the time. Have you ever considered anything like that? Getting a smoker, getting a, like diving into one of the side. Did you, did you say dehumidifier? Yeah. What did I mean? Uh, dehydrator. Dehydrator. Yeah, that's what I mean. I guess it's the same thing. Maybe it's just a semantic thing. But maybe one's dehydrator. maybe one's for your your house. <laughs> well, I, I dehumidifier is an appliance that you have in your basement. Y'all knew what I meant. One of them Corey can use in his bathrooms. Uh, one of them <laughs> he can't. Uh, right. it's, this is not really niche anymore, but th- because the uni pizza grills really mm. started to make like making pizza at home kind of a thing. I feel like if I'm going to take the time to do one of those middle-aged guy invests in a food hobby thing, it's probably going to be pizza. It's going to be the like getting the right flour, you know, getting, um, you know, filtered water, figuring out how to do like the pizza thing at home and make really, really good pizza. What's that thing dad just got? I think it's one of the unis. They got it as the... It's like, but there's so some of them are gas, some of them you use like your own charcoals. So there's different versions within uni, and then there's different sizes and heat. And a lot of it is the flour. So like Costco has the Costco has good flour, but you can order it's called like King King Arthur is the brand, I think. It's like one of the really good flour brands. They have high protein content, notably King Arthur. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. And then Part of the part of the thing that people say makes East Coast pizza taste like East Coast pizza is the water they use versus like if you're not on the East Coast, you're just using like filtered water uh, or whatever. But yeah, so there's so many of those at home pizza kit oven things now. It's not niche anymore, but that might be a thing that I would I feel like I could get into is like this looks like Bender from Futurama. <laughs> it absolutely does. You should be subscribed to us on YouTube. You can see what Corey's talking about. Um, but yeah, those are cool. So I could see maybe doing that to like really make pizza exactly how I want it. Uh doing something like that. Dude. And well, and then if you're gonna do a deep dive, then you can like and you have the cash, you can side by side some of these pizza ovens. I've seen YouTube videos of dudes like building their own out of cinder blocks and and mortar in their backyard and doing wood fired ones. And yeah. That'd be that'd be cool. That begs a fun question that feels sort of related that I've asked two separate groups of people this week, and we can use it as this episode's icebreaker. If you could snap your fingers and instantly become uh, highly proficient or a master of some thing that you don't currently have experience in, or become very knowledgeable about a subject that you currently know very little about, what would it be? My example would be. I would love to be able to absolutely shred on an electric guitar. Mm. I'm really just teaching myself acoustic very slowly over time with no sense of urgency. But if I could just snap my finger, of all the things, I think if I could just snap my fingers and be really, really good at something, it would be electric guitar. What about you guys? An unexplored hobby. I feel like, okay, so the hobby helps because I'm like, I feel like there's the practical side and then there's the fun side. It doesn't have to be purely. I mean, it could be a it could be a a, a hireable or or a skill you can monetize. So don't just say say, brain surgeons because then I'll be a millionaire. No, because you need a degree anyways. I would say something like being a master of coding languages would be very helpful in today's world to be able to just create apps anytime you have an idea. I don't know that I'd want to do that, though, but that would certainly be useful. Hmm. Something that I don't know most people would guess that I think would be really interesting and could be fun, but maybe make money, be like master filmmaking, like have Steven Spielberg's knowledge or James Cameron or somebody like that. Like everything they know about making film, because between an iPhone and a camera and a Mac you can do a lot of stuff and have a lot of fun as a hobby if you know what they know about making films. Uh, so, like, that would be something that could be a fun hobby and potentially a career. Uh, so, filmmaking would be a fun one. 
But then it again, pra- practical, like I'd be great to be awesome at a bunch of languages. <laughs> Lock picking. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. Cracking into banks. What's that? Because then, then you still have morals. You just learned a skill real fast. You still have okay. morals. Okay. <laughs> so there's a couple. I okay. would say, like, I like that. Coding, coding is very practical. Filmmaking would be very fun. I there think. you go. Kendall, how about you? You can already shred on an electric guitar. <laughs> oh, well, I can't shred on an electric guitar, but, um, you know, it's, it's, this is difficult for me to answer i guess i i feel like i basically dabble in the things i want to do but i'm not like outstanding at really any of it uh and but one thing that always impresses me is sports knowledge Mm. from watching various different guys so like colin cowherd is a guy that that comes to mind who he's he's able to analyze sports really quickly um like in a Q&A kind of session with someone else and he'll come up with with these analytics that like I didn't even like he, very often he's the first one that I've heard put something in a particular way um and then another guy who's on Fox and associated with him is is Joel Klatt who like he just has this knowledge of like he has this frame of reference that is massive of being to pull up like specific numbers and data and things, things like that. So like, I feel like that kind of memory um, for sports knowledge, I feel like it's really cool. And then like, I could talk sports and, and I could retain information about sports much better. Retaining very specific detailed information on stuff is something I feel like I always kind of struggled with. Mm. It's why like, I don't remember names. I don't remember like, who is that person in that movie film? Where else have I seen them? Yeah. Those yeah. kinds of things. Like, and I used to think it's because like, I just don't spend the, you know, I don't, after I watch a movie, even if I really, really liked the movie, and it was one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not going online and deep diving any of it. Like I'm not looking at the cast. I'm not paying attention to credits. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not uh, looking up fan theories. Like I just, I don't do that. Um, and I used what's to think that, that what's that world like? You must have, you Well, know. so it's it's because I it's because I and so I, I used to think that I don't know any of this stuff because I don't do any of that stuff, but I feel like that there's folks who like are just really good at retaining this information. Like they can watch the credits and like pick out names over the course of time and start putting things together. But there's something really pure about what you're describing of which I know nothing about, because I do all the deep diving, as you both know. But there's something really pure about just going, that was nice. And then going home. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I really liked that. Yeah. And it ends there. (laughs) But okay, so here's the thing. I do read a lot of sports news. Okay. But I don't I don't retain it the same way that you guys retain film knowledge. Hmm. I don't know if it's, yeah, I guess so. It is retaining because some of it's just curiosity and like, I really liked them. What else are they in that I can go watch them in now? Oh, I didn't even realize they were a guest star on NCIS five years ago. You know, I I do that sometimes. Like I can do that on a, on a basic level. mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, the way you guys go through, oh, that has, that that has, like, you've never even seen a series like that has this person in it. And Mm -hmm. Like I might have a few favorite actors. So like James Spader is one that mm-hmm. I have like seeked out things that he was in. Mm-hmm. But that's only because like he's one of my favorite actors of all time. Right. There's probably about three people that I can do that for. Um gotcha. You guys have like a whole list of people you can do that for. <laughs> so part of what prompted this, and this was a conversation that I used at work today as an icebreaker, but also th- the first time I asked that question was when Greg and I drove down to get that truck. And what what prompted it was Getty Lee uh, has a show on Paramount Plus right now called Getty Lee Asks, are bass players human too? <laughs> and he just interviews uh, famous uh, bass players. As a part of that, he gets into what what they do when they're not touring. And so, like, his first guest is the bassist from Primus, uh, Les Claypool. 
And he's like, Les, tell me about what you do when you're not on stage rocking out. And he's like, well, I own a taco truck. I think it's a, ta- no, it's a hot dog. He owns a hot dog stand and he likes fishing. And then he interviews another guy from, I think, Metallica. Yeah, Robert Trujillo. And he likes skateboarding and he's deep into skateboarding and is really good at it. And he can do the tricks and stuff. So I just think it's fascinating when people are kind of known for one thing or like you said, Kendall, I've kind of already explored the hobbies I want to explore and I'm either doing them or decided I don't want to do them anymore. Yeah. But it's but like, not, what, what are the ones like, yeah. Yeah. What are the ones that you've like seen from afar and gone? That'd be really cool to be good at that or explore that. And for everyone's benefit, dehumidification is taking out moisture from air. Oh. And dehydration is taking out water from something. That makes sense. That but makes air sense. is you something. Wouldn't... So I would argue. That. Well, I mean, you wouldn't describe a pool as humid. <laughs> it's highly, it's the epitome of humid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Enough of me prompting conversation. What the heck are you guys up to? What's going on? Got a question for you. Uh, driving home the other night, had to use the restroom. No, I wasn't going to make it home. McDonald's on the way. Pull in. It's late enough that there's like one car in the drive through nobody in the restaurant except the employees. Walk in. Men's room is locked. This isn't like I just need a urinal. It's like I I need the restroom. <laughs> uh, are you jumping in? Are you are you gonna jump into the women's room if you really gotta go? Like really gotta go? Are you are you gonna wait and potentially have a have a problem on your hands? Because I realize now this isn't just oops. You know you, you can't if you pass somebody coming out of the women's room. This isn't just a, oh did I pick the wrong bathroom? This like people might think it's a political thing these days. This is not. It's not what this is. This is just a. I you know, I I needed. You don't understand. I needed to use the restroom. I identify as about to shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're middle aged. So are you? Are you jumping in the ladies' room in that situation? This isn't twelve thirty at, at a lunch rush. This is nighttime. I wasn't even sure the lobby was going to be open kind of situation. Like I thought I might have to pound on the door and say, rest, you know, to the employees, like mouthing that I need to use the restroom. If I mean, I'll say this, even if it is like 1230 during lunch rush and it's either use the women's restroom or your pants become a, a concrete restroom. truck shoot. <laughs> yeah. I'm using the women's restroom. Yeah, the only dilemma at that point was not really a dilemma, just something it was a fact. Uh, while I'm in there, if I hear anyone else come in, I can't leave while they're in there. So I'm pretty much locked in the stall if other people are in there and I'm beelining out. Fortunately, I saw there was a sanitizer on the wall outside the restrooms, a hand sanitizing station. So I'm thinking I don't even need to wash in this instance. I just need to get the heck out of the bathroom when I'm done and I'll sanitize and go because I don't want to catch any sort of weird flack uh, or some weird social situation trying to get in. I thought so, but then you're questioning yourself in the moment because you're like, should I have just waited? I probably, you know, you're like, I probably could have waited, but we're all getting older and you're not sure how long I probably could have waited would have held up, right? This this is a McDonald's, so chances are good there was maybe just one stall in there anyway yeah with a lock on the door yeah and i'm not even being funny in this political climate i dare somebody to say something worst case scenario worst case scenario you're gonna walk out of there or unlock the door and see a woman waiting and you just make this face it's you just do that that's uh, whatever emoji yeah yeah (laughs) that seemed that seemed clear enough to me but i was in my head in the moment going you know this could create a social an awkward (laughs) oh yeah oh i would feel self-conscious the whole time doing it yeah 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 but i'm like but there's no other answer right that right you're that close this wasn't like a i can i'll make it home and this was like a 
I'm not making it home. I'm finding a place to stop. Yeah, and then you discover, situation. Yeah, and then and then you discover what Creed Bratton discovered, and that is women's restrooms are almost always nicer. Wouldn't it be funny <laughs> if like women's restrooms, even at places like McDonald's and gas stations, were like 10 times nicer than what we experience as guys with like the, le- leather couches and yeah the mcdonald's equivalent of that is a 37 inch silver phillips tv with speakers on the side <laughs> that's on some kind of spa channel and it's like and it's like yeah. spa noises in the bathroom and then uh, they, you hear a plug-in lysol thing going and then smell lavender you know every couple minutes mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that's that's you the know, McDonald's equivalent. listen there's you're right on Corey. There's, there's a lot of, and, and women probably don't think about this, but there's a lot of boys, every boy who grew up, um, going to shopping malls with his mother mm-hmm. and being taken into like the Lazarus women's restroom because you're a toddler. And then that moment when you're old enough to go into the men's restroom by yourself at Lazarus or Sears or wherever else. And you're like, what the where where the hell is the sitting department? Like where? I'm pretty sure they don't even clean in here. Yeah, it's <laughs> the crazy. women's room had doors to the floor. Yeah, I I very specifically remembered some department store restrooms. Like you walk in through the women's bathroom door into a seating area yeah. with couches and chairs and a coffee table, and then another door that went into the actual restroom. They have a seating room. Yeah. And then, and then you're, and then you're, you know, five years old walking into the men's restroom for the first time at the same place. And, you know, you walk in and you're greeted by, you know, just right there by the door, some dude hanging out at the urinal and that's all there is to it. And you've got, yeah, I I honestly wouldn't have, I would have been a little self-aware, but I, in terms of, is this right or wrong? That's an easy question. It's, I just have to deal with a potential awkward situation but it's like i'm definitely doing it that's not the question the question is just like "Eh, i'm gonna have to make a face or explain come up with a clever little quip when i walk out of like hey it was it was do or die (laughs) yeah i would have waited for the men's restroom but you know underwear prices these days (laughs) inflation uh so do you do you feel do you feel obligated to buy something on the way out Eat like coffee, a drink, something like that. Depends on the place. McDonald's, no. Yeah. I felt exactly the same way. <laughs> I don't know why. Gas. I, in my head, I was thinking gas station, McDonald's, no. But for some reason in my head, if I jumped to Wendy's, I went, I probably should grab a soda <laughs> on the way out. I don't what know is Wendy's, it but fancy McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh, McDonald's is just not fancy enough, but Wendy's might just be a half a step above where I'm, I'm now feeling the urge to like, okay. It's funny that you said Wendy's. I thought you were going to go like Panera for sure. I got to buy like a scone, but like, <laughs> like in you your head, we- Wendy's is that much more of an elevated dining experience that you're like, I owe them a purchase. <laughs> you know where we both grow up. Our high-end restaurants were Red Lobster and Olive Garden, okay? There yeah. weren't no steakhouses. That those were the steakhouses. Mm-hmm. I know so, I know I know our mom is only on the first like in her teens listening back to our library of episodes, but she did just comment on our from the middle for the Midlers page when I was talking about ghetto pops because you brought up Panaz. <laughs> and I said like, "Hey, which is your favorite flavor with a puke emoji?" and she goes, "Hey now." <laughs> So she, she didn't like that I said that. Sorry, I cut you off. Those 39 cent Fago two liters got us through a lot of summers. Uh, you know, anyways. So yeah. I, th- I, I thought I had to bring that one up. But I feel like there is a, probably a threshold for most people where you're like, I should grab a coffee or soda on the way out because I use the bathroom. That's fine. Uh, Wherever so- that threshold is, I, I'll tell you that I had a kid who had to go to the bathroom on our trip to the, that karate tournament. And, uh, the best option I could find was a city barbecue. And it was, we've walked in, used the bathroom, walked out. No, yeah, I get it. I get it. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, that's one thing. Did you guys see the uh, Universal Epic Universe? Like, uh, uh, so Universal in Orlando, Florida is like the theme park. 
and they announced the new Epic Universe a couple of years ago, but their COVID slowed it down or whatever. Did you see the theme parks that they're they're the worlds that they're doing inside Universal? Oh, Universe? Tell me more. Yeah, no, nothing. So I, I just found this interesting because we talk a lot about like Disney stuff, and people have said for years Disney World and Disneyland need to have a villains themed area and do like one of the villain forts or castles or whatever. So yeah. when you this new universal epic universe looks freaking awesome. So when you first walk in, there's going to be like a main entry area with like a quote portal that takes you into the main world and then an actual like garden, huge, really nice garden area. And then the themed universes are how to train your dragon. So it's going to be a Viking world with like flying dragons, another wizarding world themed area, uh, Super Nintendo World, Celestial Park, which is like the main kind of entry area, and then Dark Universe, which is Universal Studios old monster universe. So like Dracula and Frankenstein, and it's going to be all themed around villains. People have been asking Disney to do this for years with like do a creepy castle in another part of the park and then have all villains walking around instead of princesses. Mm. I just thought it was super fascinating that they were doing like the, the themes that they picked felt like this was like their best case scenario. Like I feel like normally people associate Disney with generally making good moves. And if you're, or like somebody like Apple, Apple normally makes overall the right moves at the right time this felt like universal just nailed it with some of the stuff that they're planning and i thought it was really intriguing and then Corey, from your point of view especially with like the art and design and the theming and stuff i didn't know if you'd have any opinions on it but if you don't have any that's fine i didn't know if you guys saw it it just looked cool and for anyone listening if you saw it or go look up videos it's pretty neat what they're planning or have have in mind I swore I saw a, a select group of people had gotten access to Super Nintendo World. This might not even be the I same. think it was one of those in California. Okay, then that's what I saw. Yeah. This isn't built yet. This will be in Florida. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, I'm I'm down. I think the dark like the dark villain monster creature themed like world, not just like a Halloween theme at Disney where like Mickey has a pump smiling pumpkin hat on, but like a universal like villains walking or creatures walking around in like part of the world has a very um millennials going on vacation by themselves without kids kind of feel. Uh oh, Dylan, they're <laughs> gonna have Animal Crossing characters. Oh why boy. Not? because that why got, not? That got us through a good portion of COVID. Yeah, there's also Lego sets that are Animal Crossing themed, <clears throat> coming out, by the way, for any of the fans. I just thought it was super fun. I thought the idea of a Viking village with the Thank how you. to train your dragon thing. Obviously, Wizarding World is super popular, so they're going to dive into that more. Um, everybody loves Mario, you know, Nintendo and Mario. Um, and then the creepy. It just felt spot on. Like, man, they're really, they're really nailing what could be some really fun themes um, and it almost feels like they didn't say this. It almost feels like this is geared more towards adults, except for the Mario thing. Um, mm -hmm. The other ones feel like it could be a really fun, um, fun excursion for the adults that are on vacation, too. So pretty cool. Check it out if you like to go on YouTube and watch announcement videos and tours and stuff. Speaking of nail it yet, we're going to nail the back half of this episode, just like we nailed the front after we hear some words from some of our friends in Odd Pods Dehumidifier. Hey, this is Grabman Brisket Podcast. Join us every Monday where we talk about the latest trends in barbecue, interviews with world top pit masters, celebrity cooks. Ooh, like uh, Wee Man from Jackass. And musicians. Like Rich O'Toole. So check us out. We do beer reviews, barbecue fails. So many fires. Dude, a lot of people just burn their houses down for no reason. We also talk about cocaine hippos versus Beth Gators. Learn how to make some tailgate gravy. Altercations with Texas Rangers. People throwing Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. So check out grabthebrisket.com for podcast info, viral social media posts, and so much more. And we're back. Speaking of nailing it, do we want to talk about Vince McMahon at all? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. Well... Uh, Speaking of shitty situations and nailing stuff is what you mean. Oh, boy. Well, we just uh, entered a new category. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, 
on the podcast platform. And I thought we might not have anything to talk about this week. No, this I know. And this has cool. been one of the best, like, mm. most free-flowing episodes. Seriously, Kendall, had you heard about the Vince McMahon stuff over the last couple of days? Not over the last couple of days, but it, so, I mean, I know I know of the allegations, but did something like something hit within the last couple of days? Well, he res- How yeah. many people don't listen to wrestling? Who's Vince McMahon? Oh. Gotcha. Or watch okay. wrestling. Go ahead, Kendall. Vince McMahon is basically the godfather of modern professional wrestling. So he's he was the guy who who brought WWF and WCW together under one roof with a conglomeration there. And and he's I mean, he's been the guy ahead of it for a long time up until several years ago. He handed it over to some others, but he was still involved. Still involved, still shaped the UFC merger to create TKO. Like they yeah. did a big New York stock exchange with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Triple H and rang the bell on the New York stock exchange. Yeah. We're talking up up until like a couple years ago. Um, like still on camera doing playing his part. Um yeah, I mean a, a legend in the professional wrestling world. And I mean the guy responsible for the for the like superb marketing strategies to to put it on our TVs when we were kids and yeah for generations man this guy is one of the names that you that you say he's responsible for this yeah so update accusations of sex trafficking he says these are grotesque and horrific uh uh, accusations. I look forward to fighting this and clearing my name, but I will resign and step down from all formal roles having anything to do with TKO, WWE, etc., etc., etc. So wow. he's he's stepped down from all of it in light of the what what surfaced with this stuff. So that I didn't hear. Now who knows he, about behind the scenes, but functionally it seems like he hasn't played much of a role anyway. Right. But that, I could be really wrong about that. But some of the headlines, have. some of the headlines have used the term Godfather. So it's funny that you, you said that, but like, yeah, the, he's just iconic, an iconic figurehead, even if he's been active in the day to day recently or not. So, right. Uh, interesting for sure. You guys streaming anything, reading anything, listening to anything new? Streaming, yes. I just blitzed the Marvel Cinematic Universe Disney Plus show Echo, which is based on the hero of the same name. Did you guys watch like Daredevil on Netflix and Hawkeye on Disney Plus? So Daredevil would have been years ago. Hawkeye, yes. Uh, Okay. Daredevil, no. Even though you've said that's one of the best. Yeah. So kind of a big, kind of a big thing. So quickly, Netflix made several Marvel shows before Marvel was really doing a lot with TV and Disney Plus didn't exist. They did Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, which led to Punisher, The Defenders, and multiple seasons of several of those shows. They sort of existed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but very loosely. Like, they might be sitting, characters might be sitting in a bar, and the news on the TV would mention an event that had happened in the Marvel Universe. Very loose. Well, very recently, uh, they talked about bringing Charlie Cox, uh, who played the actor who played Daredevil, back into the MCU officially, like, officially official marvel's now making stuff with him not just netflix and then you know scrapping the storylines they'd had for all those shows and rebooting it all calling it daredevil reborn well then they scrapped all of that and then they basically said we're gonna just make the netflix shows officially official canon and so they brought vincent d'onofrio back as kingpin from the daredevil series they're bringing some of the other actor actors from the daredevil show back So it's really exciting for fans who've been watching all this Marvel stuff for a long time. So I say all of that to say um, you don't necessarily need to have seen Daredevil um, to watch Echo. And you don't really need to see anything to watch Echo. But if you've seen Hawkeye, that's the most recent thing that's helpful. And it kind of picks up where Hawkeye leaves off. Uh, So Echo is in the series Hawkeye. 
so is Kingpin. And then you see Echo uh, in her own show. And a really good series. Final Fight in the... It's only five episodes. Final Fight was disappointing, to be frank. So, like, it doesn't build as well as it could have or should have. But it's really interesting. My favorite thing about it is if you decide to give it a go, again, it's only five episodes. So all of them collectively are probably, you're probably looking at maybe three hours worth of a show to, to watch the five episodes. It's, it's really fun to jump back into street level heroes again. And I think that's what like daredevil did really well. Um, Mm -hmm. Or when Spidey's not saving the universe and he's just fighting like thugs or vulture or like one person or fighting kingpin kingpin pin feels so much more realistic and down to earth as a villain but still scary and that's way more fun for me sometimes when they're trying to rebuild the mcu it's not like you can't always have a galactic level threat like the universe can't be ready to implode every time sometimes you just need like this small kind implications of, yeah small <laughs> implications <laughs> Sometimes you just need like King, Kingpin's being a D bag in New York City, and, mm-hmm. and he doesn't have powers. He does, but he doesn't. He's just kind of like a tank, brute force fighter, and it's just kind of cool to watch really cool fighting scenes that are uh, much more grounded and down to earth in a series. So it's exciting because it feels like maybe they're going to be tying in potentially. Uh, like Hawkeye kind of passes off his thing to Haley Steinfeld's character. Maybe they're going to bring her in with Echo and Daredevil. And if we're really lucky, maybe Spider-Man into like something with Kingpin could be really cool as like New York. We're bring a few heroes into New York at ground level and fend off Kingpin who's ticked off and um, is a cool villain. So a uh, good series, kind of a disappointing final episode. What's also really neat, um, a couple things that are unique about Echo as a hero. The character is deaf and has a prosthetic leg. And the character is also a descendant of the Choctaw Indians. And so her culture and a lot of the story takes place around the Choctaw Indian nation. And a lot of the show is set in Oklahoma. And so that's really interesting. We just it's some stuff we've never seen before. Um, and I don't mean like Miss uh, Miss Marvel um, is uh, Indian or Pakistani or something. So it's not that we haven't seen other races and cultures, but we haven't seen anything with like a Native American influence. So that was also pretty cool to see how they handled that alongside her, um, you know, her being deaf and, and having a prosthetic leg, but still being like such a cool uh, character fighter whatever so good series ties in well to some of the other stuff that's happening interested to see where they take it um and uh this was one that i wasn't excited about when they announced it but now that i've watched it i'm really interested to see where who they partner her up with in the future in a kind of a cool um what kind of you know essentially defenders like show they put her in like combine her with a couple other heroes like daredevil and hawkeye and uh, that could be a really, really cool um, series or movie with uh, Vincent D- D'Onofrio as Kingpin as a villain. So anyways, yeah, if you're into it, check it out. Uh, if you're still watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you like Daredevil, this would be in that vein more so than like some of the other stuff. Like Loki has been way different. WandaVision was way different. Um, this would be much more like Hawkeye or Daredevil as a series. And I think the actress that portrays her is also deaf. And to that actually deaf. Yeah. And I think actually prosthetic leg. So to that end, uh, in some of the graphic design circles that I follow and I'm sharing the poster now, one of the posters now on uh, on our YouTube channel, people were like these guys, whoever designed this poster, nailed it, turned off the lights and went home. Like it's just such a perfect poster in ASL sign language uh, for the show. And I thought that was pretty cool. Definitely sounds like something I would like to check out. Yep. Cool series. You've even got the minifig. Oh, I do. Yeah. Where's that at? Yeah, this came out. So Marvel does their mystery minifig boxes through Lego. And uh, this is uh, Echo and kind of her final uniform for the final episode. And like pretty good if you're a Lego geek. 
like the printing, the small, really small printing on pieces is neat, like on the back of her hair and then on the leg piece uh, on the pros- prosthetic. You can see kind of from the side how they like did the That's prosthetic cool. leg versus the normal. If you're not on YouTube, you're just missing out. You'll have to Google uh, Marvel Echo minifig and you can check it out. Um, but the prosthetic leg is really, really cool and well done. So, yeah, super sweet. I just so when kind of what I'm streaming and and a new book I got that I'm excited to share. But um, when Joe Rogan went to Spotify in that massive deal that he signed, I thought or misread, I thought that you would only be able to watch Joe Rogan if you had a, a Spotify premium membership. If you have the web or the desktop app, you can still watch Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. And I know this now because for years and years, fans of Joe Rogan, fans of stand-up comedy, and especially fans of Bobby Lee. Oh, I know. Yeah. Have been begging both parties to collab and for Joe to have Bobby on. And he finally did. And that's when I learned I can watch it. I thought I was going to have to steal somebody's like Spotify. So if you're like me, an idiot, and think that dehumidification and dehydration are the same thing, you probably also thought that you needed something fancy to watch Joe Rogan. I'm like, there's so many guests he's had in the last couple of years that I now want to go back and watch yeah. because I, yeah. thought, I thought I was blocked from, from viewing and listening to them. So what is it about having Bobby Leon specifically that, so many people want because well, I was reading a little bit about the episode and how it went and saw some clips and apparently it wasn't great, but I'm, but there were a lot of people that were very disappointed uh, or were very excited about Bobby Lee being on it. Is it just because yeah. Bobby Lee is so popular? No. So it's what it was, was uh, my understanding of it is that Bobby Lee was avoiding going on on mm-hmm. on Joe Rogan's podcast and uh, one of the one of the things i know that he has said before was that like he was saving that for when he's promoting a special famously okay. bobby lee has never done a special and sometimes he goes into deep dives like emotionally <laughs> why he doesn't want to do a special because for comedians that means you're burning all of your material without yeah. doing a special a comedian basically like has their act and they ride it their whole life and it gets longer and longer but like depending on the crowd they'll pick and choose what they're going to do but it never really changes yeah when you do a special all of that gets burned yeah and now now you have to re-up and uh so that's that's one of the things but also the the two of them have history together so and the infamous uh carlos mencia scandal involving Joe Rogan, Carlos Mencia stealing uh, jokes from various comedians. And then Joe Rogan was the one who stood up and, and created this whole online rush against Carlos Mencia. Bobby Lee, who was best friends with Carlos Mencia at the time, uh, had a video that was leaked by Joe Rogan that basically like verified everything Joe Rogan was saying. Uh And, um, and then Bobby Lee and Joe Rogan ended up at the comedy store being being best of friends and yeah. remained as such, even though they hadn't been on each other's podcasts. Oh, um, okay. And so they there's this relationship there that everybody knows exists. Like and uh but for some odd reason, like Bobby Lee had yet to be on Joe Rogan's podcast. So it was a big deal when it when it happened. I've I I too have heard mixed reviews. Mixed meaning, like some people thought it was really weird and didn't like it, and other people who loved it. So, yeah, I haven't watched it. the The complaint, the only real um, theme of the complaints that I saw were um, apparently Joe seems to be getting more and more political himself, and not, and he's he's going down longer and longer tangents, and so he wasn't letting Bobby talk because for several long chunks he was just going off on. And I guess that's not Bobby's thing to sit and talk about politics. So it was like, if you're going to have Bobby on, like talk about other stuff that let Bobby be Bobby and don't go down a political hole 
you know, if you like Joe doing that, then you'll probably love the episode. Yeah. If you don't, or if you if you find the clips of Joe doing that and put them all, the the thing with Joe Rogan episodes is like they're forever long. Yeah. So I mean, if the political stuff really stands out to somebody, they could probably watch any of Joe Rogan's episodes and think that was a political episode. Yeah. But if you like sit down and like actually do the the time marking yourself and find out how much of it was he actually talking politics. It often is not as much as people think. It's kind of like I saw somebody do a thing about dove into Taylor Swift and the Kansas city chiefs and how he's tired about hearing people complain about Taylor Swift being the only thing he's like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, you can actually go back. People have done this and add up all of the time that Taylor Swift was on screen during a Chiefs game. For everybody saying, I'm sick and tired of seeing Taylor Swift when I'm trying to watch football. The average, 23 seconds for a three-hour long. <laughs> That's what people are complaining about. So like maybe four minutes and a whole Yeah, thing. yeah. So, I mean, some people just get annoyed at politics, and I get it. Some people just yeah. get annoyed at Taylor Swift and... I get it. And so that, yeah. for that 23 seconds seems like an eternity to a lot of people. Yeah. And I don't think it was politics in and of itself, but it was like, I, again, I don't watch Bobby Lee. So it was like, that's not really Bobby's forte to sit and talk about politics. So like, no. it's just the wrong subject for the guest. It's not that it's not his forte. Bobby plays the Hollywood game and Bobby knows that if he shares his real opinions on anything, half of, of the people that would watch him when he could be cast in a role for something are not going to be fans of his anymore. So he's, he even, he's made this abundantly clear, both in tiger belly, bad friends. Uh, and he said it to Joe straight up. He's like, I want to be able to say some of the stuff you say, but I can't <laughs> yeah. like, can't like I'm going to be labeled a certain thing in Hollywood. If I, yes, Joe, Joe went on and on about a few different things one and i was like oh this is gonna get backlash the reasons why he loves austin and you can you can take and why it's anti-la in a lot of ways and a lot of that comes down to politics he called it the cult of la or the cult of hubs of leftist thinking uh and his thoughts on covid uh as that's calmed down and he's gathered and talked to more people. He's formed strong opinions now about what COVID was and was not. And Bobby's just going like, Ugh. <laughs> like <laughs> he's just kind of, it wasn't that he didn't have thoughts. It was like, he, he knew he couldn't for him anyway. And the way he plays the game. Yes. And because of his ego, he was waiting for Joe to ask him. They've talked about it a hundred times. It just never worked out scheduling wise. And He's he's one of those types that he's really good in a club scene and has had the same material for a really long time. And to your point perfectly, Kendall, he wanted to wait till he has a special. He hasn't done a special because he knows he's going to burn all his content. So it was like this this uh, cart before the horse thing where he's like, I'll do that when Joe asks and I'm going to do a special because I really don't want to do the hard work of coming up with more material because I'm lazy. I just want to be the funny guy doing the same thing I've been doing for a long time. And so it was, yeah, all those things. I thought it was really good. I'm surprised to hear that there was negative feedback about the pairing other than Joe's comments that were politically charged. Uh, and for Joe, it actually went short. I think it was just over two hours. And Bobby was very done because he's used to an hour and you can be I'm like, all right. Oh, OK, man. OK, OK. All right. That was good. Thanks for having me. And Joe's trying to keep going. He's like, we can yeah. keep going. He's like, nope, that's it. Nope. Yeah, because I heard the one one clip that played. It was Bobby like going, OK, ask me about my thing now or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Or he's like, all right, let's let me plug my thing. You could tell uh, he was just whatever internal clock he has for conversations was tapped out. Yeah. and He was like ready to go. Yeah, and yeah. in no way, shape, or form am I saying everyone was complaining. It was oh, like yeah. oh, if yeah, no, there no, no. was if there was a theme among the complaints of the people that were excited, it's that maybe Joe went too long on political stuff. Um, Not is, surprised by. Are that. there any other comedians? that do what bobby does like i'm not doing specials i just want to use the same jokes forever oh yeah I'm sure, I'm sure there are but are there other notable comedians 
Like, is there anybody else? Yeah, that- he kind of became king of podcast world, didn't he? And that, and that's why we all know him. Yeah. yeah. And there's a there's a there's a Bobby Lee phenomenon where other podcasts know that if they have him on, their numbers are going to absolutely spike, and people will start listening to them regularly and subscribe. If they can have Bobby on, you've seen a lot of people still starting brand new podcasts. They make Bobby one of their first five guests because they know if they get him on because he's just so wacky. Like Mm -hmm. I personally, having seen his stand up now multiple times, I just like him as a ball of energy. I don't think his stand up is all that great. I'm I'm entertained because it's him. But the jokes in the writing themselves are they're fine. I just like him in a podcast setting where he's just so over the top. Yeah. That's what people tune in to see. Joe didn't need the help. He already has the following, right? Sure. But like these Bobby Altoffs of the world and these like C list -list actors who decide to start a podcast one day, they know if we have Bobby on, we're good. Yeah. So there's a thing. Why haven't we had Bobby on? (laughs) I've tried. Well, because. Because Corey keeps making fun of his writing. Yeah. And, I keep, and I keep making him uncomfortable when I see him live. And the restraining order is a real problem. Yeah. I mean, driving, you know, getting very detailed nude images. So so that's one thing I watched. Let me tell you what I'm reading. So there's three things I'm reading. The first is episode 233. We had my friend Chris Massey on. The first thing that's on my on my desk right now that I'm reading is the clarity question. If you don't have your copy, it's now available in paperback. He talked all about it and his story unrelated to this book, but kind of related in episode 233. In episode uh, 237, we had uh, Dylan and I's buddy Jeff Bittner on to talk about his retro RPG book, Your Quest. So that's the second thing that I got to work through. But just showed up today because I heard him talking about it on Neil Brennan's podcast, Blocks, Rain Wilson's new book, soul boom why we need a spiritual revolution over the last many many years rain has gotten into many different forms of organized religion i think he is famously as a child was sort of raised in the baha'i faith but he's he's researched and looked into all types i know christian magazines that have done uh feature articles on him and and have really enjoyed what he had to say about spirituality over religion so I don't think I'm going to agree with everything that Rain says in here, but when Dwight writes a book on spirituality and why our our nation, world maybe even, is in need of a spiritual revolution, I'm going to buy it and check it out. So I'll let you guys know what I think after I finish it. But available only in hard book back now on Amazon. Soul Boom. Excited. Wonderful. I don't have anything terribly new in the streaming world still wwe and fargo baby but i'm trying to get through fargo i've got like a season and a half left and uh i'm enjoying it for the most part so far if you've if you're wondering about how the seasons work with fargo if you're familiar with american horror story it's very similar you have like the same core group actors but every season is its own story Mm -hmm. um in a different setting different everything i mean different timing time era even um and which means that for me and probably for most people some seasons you'll really like other seasons you're just going to kind of get through uh and so that's what i have found um with fargo some of the seasons are nailing it some of the seasons aren't so much yeah. um but when i'm done with that like i i've decided i'm going to watch the bear yeah but I'm very much looking forward to that. I've heard nothing but good things, and that's I've a heard, very cool cast. I've heard great things about yeah. the bear. So yeah, that's exciting. You'll have to let us know. Going to dive into that. Yeah, and I've got a, like a maybe a couple books in the coffers. There's one that I've been poking through that we're going to be going through at church called Christian Beliefs by by Grudem. Um, which is just a basically entry level theology doctrinal kind of kind of book but um my son my oldest son just read a book 
and did a book report on a book called The Green Ember, which uh, which is a fantasy world book where the main characters are rabbits. And okay. it actually sounds interesting. And so I think I'm going to go through it and read in part to make sure that like he's actually making accurate book reports. Okay. But uh, but this one seems like I, I will actually enjoy the book. So I'm going to read Green Ember. It took him a long time uh, to get through it. It's, I don't know. I'm, I'm expecting Narnia. That's what I'm expecting. Yeah. Do you guys do any percentage audiobooks? Or you- I don't do any audiobooks. My wife does. Zero percent. Some people are like they just they still drive a lot for work or whatever. And so mm-hmm. audiobooks make sense. I was just curious. I was I was starting to do audiobooks pre-COVID uh mm-hmm. among podcasts. So I'd switch between depending on my mood. If I could focus, I would do an audiobook. If I was not focusing i was doing like podcasts just in the background but that's interesting because there's I so think many we've, yeah i think we've talked i just so prefer a, i want to yeah i want to smell and break in, in a new book i just love a book yeah I'll, I'll carry three books on a work trip and not even open one i just because i end up being yeah. busy or filling my time with other things but i would it's rather- a cool thing to have in your hands while you're walking around the airport yeah <laughs> it's an accessory with your cowboy hat and your Jordans. With your All cowboy right, hat and your Jordans. Well, this and been, I will, I will yeah. say a couple of things since we're talking about things we might watch. If anybody has tuned in or has watched the following uh, and you want to give me some advice to watch it or not watch it before I do, since I have Apple TV Plus again, Killers of the Flower Moon is on there up for a ton of awards right now. Napoleon is on there. Uh, I want to check that out. Percy Jackson, the new uh, revival of that on Disney Plus. People seem to really be digging uh, Percy Jackson getting rebooted. And so uh, so I need to catch those. So if you're already watching them and they're worth watching or not, well, let me know because those are going to be the next things that I watch. Probably Percy Jackson. Uh, and then I'm I'm creeping through the, the last seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I had watched to the end. And then when he came back and was making new seasons again, I'm creeping through that, which the most recent funny thing was him opening a coffee shop that's not yet open. And the men's bathroom has no toilet because he just doesn't want people doing that there. Uh, (laughs) He's he's got super high end urinals that have a motor to go higher or lower on the wall with a trap to keep them from splashing. But no toilet because <laughs> people can go home to do that. So just love. I love his sense of humor. Uh, it's it's great if you're or, a fan. Or those guys can find a women's room at a McDonald's. Or they can find a women's room at a McDonald's, just hey, not his coffee shop. Hey, Dylan, if people wanted to get a hold of us to let you know if they watched those shows and would recommend them, how would they do that? Yes. There's got to be a way. Everywhere we have a social media profile, we have one link. So you don't have to try to search us and find us everywhere. That one link will take you to a lot of things. All of our other social media profiles. It'll take you to the most popular places you can listen to our podcast, uh, including YouTube, where you should be subscribed. Even to our digital tip jar, where you can leave us some money. And we'll use that money to upgrade our podcast. Uh, So make sure to check out the link. Uh, share that out. You can leave us a voicemail if you want. That's a great place to do that. And then you can also email or actually you can text or voicemail that number either way. Uh, but you can also email us from the middle at protonmail.com. Uh, if you want to send us an email, uh, definitely do that. Or just message us on any of those social platforms uh, where you can follow us as you drop a tip in the tip jar. We would appreciate it. Also, uh, if you notice my hat and you're on YouTube, head over to RDS Man. A-R-T-I-U-S-M-A-N.com. Use promo code the middle. You'll save 25% off your order, uh, which is a ton of money for you to save. It's great for you. It's great for Artie's Man, which is a local Columbus business, and it's great for us. So we love Artie's Man and appreciate their partnership. They have incredible products. You're going to need some of this stuff coming up because it was like Valentine's Day. You can get stuff for people in your life. There's candles and bathroom products and all kinds of stuff for men, but not only for men. So go check out rdsman.com because there's lots of cool stuff there. That's it. Bye. Bye. Toodles.